Hello everyone, uh, we're going to start with the first question on the homework of Edward Machines. <sighs> so in the first part, uh, they easily they are asking for the free by diagrams. Most of you finished it in class, but I'll just do that over here in case you haven't finished or uh, you missed some parts. So in part A, uh, I mean student A is standing, is, student A is basically on the ground and student B is hanging from the other side on the stri uh, string. So on A basically gravity is always exists as we know and once more time FG can be represented in three different ca uh, three different ways F lowercase g F gravitation like capital G or MG and if you would like to be more specific MAG and uh, since P is also touching to a string and there's this tension on the string and string is trying to pull him up, so FT will be acting on the guy. And what else we have? He is actually touching the ground, so there should be a normal force on that system. And again, instead of adding it to the tip, we just try to draw it from uh, the same dot. And it's just going to be from the dot, and it doesn't matter where is going to be and try to do it separate like instead of on the vector just put it on the side and uh, make it visible and clear and that is going to be the normal force Fn and right now I don't have any like length description over here so I just uh, drew them randomly I did not <clears throat> try to draw them in scale so that's free by diagram for A and for B uh, gravity is again exists for this guy as well so FG and he is not touching the ground so there's no normal force he's only touching to the string and string is actually able to keep him on uh, like in the air so F tension will be the other force acting on this guy so F tension and gravity are the only forces acting on the first object and that's my solution for A. And in part B, they're asking for the normal force. So if you would like to uh, draw the free, well, we have the free by diagram, and if we write down our next second law equation, total force acts on of a student A must be equal to mass of the student A times acceleration of student A. So over here, again, all you have to do is writing down all of the forces and how do we know what the forces are you basically refer to the free body diagram and a free body diagram you have two forces going up one force going down so basically up forces will be positive down forces will be negative and you just write everything on the free body diagram I mean if since we only have forces on the vertical axis right now we only care about that but if you had force on the x-axis then you would write this equation one more time for the x-axis and if they were asking any question about any variable on the x-axis so but for now we only have force on the vertical so we don't need to worry about what's happening on the x anyway so fn is going to be one force that is going up ft is the other force that is going up but FG goes down, so it's going to be negative, and that's equal to mass times acceleration. So F normal, that's the question mark. I do not know. Well, F tension, I do not know the tension either. So you also write it down. This is basically the learning or solving process. You write down everything that you know. You don't know FN, just put it. You don't know FT, just put it then you will try to see what else you need to figure out to find the actual unknown so until you are stuck keep going all right so now ft is unknown fg is basically given by mass of the object times gravity and that's equal to mass of the object times gravity uh, acceleration sorry so fn is unknown FT is unknown. What's my MG? Mass of the second uh, first object, student A, is given. It's 70 kilogram. 
So that's supposed to be 700 newtons then. And mass of this guy is, again, 70 acceleration. All right, in the first case, student A is stationary. He's not moving anywhere. He's not going up. He's not going down. So if there's no movement, then my acceleration will become zero. So 70 times zero. Now, what do I have? Fn plus Ft equals that negative 700, that's zero, so that negative 700 will go to the other side, so that will become 700 newtons. So as you can see, I have one thing right here. I found that normal force plus tension is equal to 700. That's, I don't, I couldn't find the answer, but I have one equation. And over here, what else I'm going to need? I can see that if I know the tension right here, that I can find the normal force. And for response questions, most of them are not going to be like single step. They're going to be requiring some additional uh, information from some other parts of the question. So you don't have one kid in that system. You have this first kid, student A, and in student A, this is the maximum that you can get. But tension on a string is something uh, useful for us because tension on the same string will be the same if there's no like uh, mass of the pulley or if there's no friction on the pulley. So right now tension is going to be the same tension that we are talking about for student B. And then you need to go back and see if you can find anything from student B. So you are going to write down the free body diagram or the second law for this uh, student B and that is going to be what? Ft going up and Fg goes down and this kid is also standing still he's not going anywhere, he's not climbing, he's not going down so that is also mass times acceleration and acceleration of this kid is zero as well so uh, F tension that we don't know minus Fg gravitational force acting on student B is going to be its mass and t uh, gravity and his mass is 60 ki uh, kilograms so that's going to be 600 and again this guy, this guy is not moving anywhere so ex his acceleration is zero so m what do I find from here I find that Ft is equal to 600 Newton. So as you can see, we found its uh, tension from the other student. So you should always look for what you know and what you can actually do with the given information all the time. And now I found my tension and normal force plus tension equals 700. What does that mean? F normal, you just substitute your F tension with 600 plus 600 is going to be equal to 700 and from here I find that my normal force in that first case is going to be 100 newtons and in part C what is happening so this time this student B is not standing still he is actually uh, climbing up and he is actually accelerating with certain acceleration so let's see what we can do for that all right let's use a different pen marker so this time C is going to be asking for the tension so when you are asking for tension you can use either one of them but uh, it's going to be easier to use the uh, student B because student B is the one who only has two forces because if you have this guy then you need to include normal force you don't want to deal with that so my total force acting on student B equals mass times acceleration and my free body diagram didn't change for student A, I mean student B, well it didn't change for A either, 
So you still have tension and gravity acting on the guy, and FT goes up, FG goes down. So you might say, okay, we already knew the tension, what's the difference? Well, you found the tension when there is no acceleration, but now I have some acceleration. Let's see how that's going to affect my equation. So FT minus my gravitational force acting on student B is 600 newtons, and my mass is 60, but this time my acceleration is not zero. It is given, it is climbing up, so that's positive, and that is going to be 0.25. Then what is going to be my F tension? 0.25 times 60 is 15. That 600 is going to go to the other side, so that's going to be 600 plus 15. So my tension is going to be 615 newtons. So part D is a little bit of concept question. I mean, there's not much a solution for that. So you found that tension when he is actually climbing up, you found a tension of 615 newtons, right? And then the question is, is student A going to be uh, like lifting off the ground? Well, what is this depending on? To be able to lift him up, Marcus, please. So to be able to lift student A up, what's gonna happen, what are you gonna need? This guy's a little bit like uh, heavier than student B, and this guy is 70 kilograms, and gravitational force of this guy is 700. So to be able to lift him up, what is going to be the force that you need? You're gonna need 700 newtons at least, right? But what is the force that you have? It's 615. So what does that mean? Student B is not going to be pulled upward. All right, and the reason why, the tension force that is created by student B on the other side is not greater than the weight of student A. So that's why he's not going to be able to lift him up. No, because tension on the string is not greater than weight of student A. So that's the last part. So the question is, what is the minimum acceleration that student B should have so that this object, uh, not object, student A is actually start moving upward? Well, that is going to uh, mean that when you're losing the contact with the surface, that means the minimum or the critical uh, point for you is this Fn. All right, this Fn is supposed to be zero. That's your critical point for that. All right, so that's one way of thinking. Or you can say that tension on the string must be equal to the weight of my student A. And my weight for student A is 700. So that means my tension on that string is supposed to be 700 so that I can actually lift off uh, the student A. So in either case, we are going to write the equation down as Ft is equal to, sorry, Ft minus Fg. We are talking about student B because student B is going to be the one that is accelerating and the only force acting on B is FT and FG. And we want this tension force to be 700 because this is the case that this guy, the student A, is going to 
lift off. Any force greater than that will lift them up. So Ft minus Fg for this is for student B must be equal to mass of student B times acceleration. And now we are trying to find acceleration. So tension, we said that's supposed to be 700 minus gravitational force of uh, B is 600. And that is supposed to be mass, which is 60 times acceleration. So 700 minus 600 is going to be 100. And then it's going to be 60 times A. If you do the math over here, your acceleration will be 100 divided by 60. And that is going to be 1.67 meters per second squared. And that is the solution for question one.